Hi everyone, it's Pratham Fernando Malla here. So with this video, uh, I would like to share some of my experiences and how I learned and what I learned right through all these years. Main thing is the, the key transparency, knowing your keys. So this video, you will really not see my face, but that's okay. But all your focus should be on this board and it's not worth looking at my face anyway. <laughs> so. Uh, the most of the young professionals and you know they just walk through this door and they, they, they just keep asking me how do I construct all sorts of chords can be ambient can be more tension or can be happy sad you just name the emotion whichever it is it all got to do with what are the relationship we have and how we make our the right choices to make it the way you want it to sound so uh, before we begin, I know I'm just doing this video with the minimum resources that I have here and uh, probably you might just hear all under noises, but just try to get the best out of what I do here and and I will just leave little time, probably you can just take screenshots, you can make your own notes and uh, just jot down whatever the points that you need to learn and you know it's and you can mention all in the comments or whatever and I can help you out in uh, which way that I will uh, try to do. And uh, so, most of the time, this will uh, lead you, open up your horizons in order to have a good transparency over keys, meaning knowing your 12 keys, as I said before, and then how you can, how you can start to hear the blue notes in a scale or the blue notes in a chord, meaning most of the professional musicians or even even the beginners because compared to my times and you know the nowadays uh, modern children probably if they just add a b note to the a minor they know how it sounds because of uh, thanks to youtube and internet and uh, but back in my times i we had to figure out everything by ourselves but the thing is most of them have stopped growing from there onwards meaning you have to keep exploring you have to keep exploring till you get the bottom of it and you go down the rabbit hole and you will the wonderland is right there at the end of the tunnel so to begin with uh, let's let's go back to roots take all the uh, the the most famous songs that you will ever know right something like a song like happy birthday to you and or twinkle twinkle little star baba black sheep the nursery rhymes that we all knew all our lives you know and uh, it was all written based on major scale so whatever we discuss from here onwards naming chords how to build relationships everything will be all related to the major scale which is dora do re mi fa sol la ti do or if you say in uh, the english way it's, it's c d f g a uh, B, C, how we write it, or if it's the Oriental Eastern music, we call it Sari, Gama, Pada, Nisa. So, Sa is which is the octave of C, and uh, and it, it's equivalent to all scales. So, the problem here, what we are looking at it is, uh, especially saxophone players, I see them as uh, harmonically very rich, in my my humble opinion. The reason is. Saxophone is a very difficult instrument to master right throughout those keys. I know it looks like hell to me personally, even though I tried, but it's uh, an amazing instrument. They should have a good transparency over certain keys if they want to improvise. Pianists, they don't have a problem with, uh, I mean, it's right in front of them. So it's easy even if they want to count their notes or whatever, it can be easy. But where else guitar players and bass players, they have they have all the symmetrical patterns. Meaning, you play one C major scale, you jump one fret up, just mean maintain the same distances between the frets. Even though if you don't know the notes, still you can play it. Same as bass guitar or any fretted instrument. Can be English mandolin, can be a banjo. It will be almost the value will be same everywhere. Just the positions will be different due to the, due to the tuning that you will be playing. Uh, but in general, you master F major chord, you can play right throughout the fretboard. But 
then did the dangerousness here is and the, the frustrating thing here is you will have only a illustrative kind of a memory or you will have only only though your fingers will do the work you don't know what the hell will is going to happen to how it relates to keys and all those things so this video will help you open up all these areas that you were searching for and uh, just see what you can get the best out of it and uh, and I just want to say something else, but I just forgot to just keep talking. And uh, yeah, likewise, I have seen some of the YouTube videos, some teachers, you know, okay, they teach you the pentonic scale and saying like you can play right through the fretboard, which I totally disagree with that because each and every key got its own character, especially for guitar. The beauty in a chord like E major, you will find it, you will not find it on a standard tuning E flat major. So, therefore, a lot of guitar players, they hate this kind of chords, which my Navita has become the most favorite chords because I have got so used to uh, playing on E major and, you know, G major, A major, just like everyone else. But the moment you start to discover how these blue notes hidden, how all these black, black notes are hidden, the beautiful notes come out, the may, the, 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 from the time you open up yourself to that, you know, open up to learn the, the, the weaker areas of yourself, you will see how beautiful it can be. So basically, this uh, it's for all genres because most of the chords, if someone asks how many chords in the world, it's unlimited. The, the very common question that I hear from uh, you know uh, uh, my students. So you can create your own chords. So this video will help you do whatever you need to do to hear relative pitch meaning let's say a dj plays right you may not have perfect pitch so but you will have relative pitch meaning i'll just take a very common uh, music chord progression which ruined the entire music industry for in my humble opinion here because i think it ruined everything because most of the songs pop techno alternative rock everything i, d I don't i don't see anything bad in that just that being it's been overused and a chord like C, G, A minor, F or A minor, F, C, G. Now you know the sound of that. You, will, you know the sound of a minor. You know the sound of a major. You may not know it theoretically, but you know how it sounds. The next thing you could go for is you will know the sound of a dominant seventh, which is a C seventh, which is commonly used in blues. I mean, that's a very easy way to just put it that way. Uh, but same as like that, there are multiple amounts of, you know, chord harmonies. Uh, if you listen to bands like Steely Dan, and if you listen to bands like, you know, even Planet X, whatever the genre it is, they can be jazz, they can be funk, they can be metal, or whichever, it doesn't matter. Theory is the same. Just like we know our 26 letters in the alphabet, we have to know these 12 keys. So first things first. The most important thing in the world, as I said, going back to... Oops. Okay, congratulations. I just dropped my iPad. That's fine. Let me fix it back for you. Okay. It's back, I guess. Right. So... And uh, let me get this light solid for you. Okay. So when we really look at it this way, and uh, let me get it a little closer so that it's right. So as I said, everything uh, relates to the major scale. Baba Black Sheep, major scale. Happy birthday to you, major scale. So know your major scales know your major scales in all 12 keys this is a must you have to learn this because you know your major scales I think you have decoded most of the mystery over here in whatever you need to know so this is important. As I said, you ask most of them just, you know, 
they will tell me the C major scale or D major scale, but if suddenly you ask them the B flat major scale, even the professionals would not know. So that is a big discrepancy in order to, if you want to grow musically. First things first. So we are learning in all 12 keys, which is, if you take the white keys on the piano, which is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, which is we got seven. And when you got the black, which is C sharp, D sharp or E flat, I prefer calling it E flat, then F, then call F, it's F sharp, then become A flat and B flat. All we need to know is this 12 keys. So, where's my duster? Can't find it. Oh, there you go. So, know these major scales very well. So, I will. let's go back to the, the major which is the simplest scale you can find you know even for guitar players or pianists white keys which is C D E F G A B this is how it looks as simple it is you know on your piano so if you take the C, which is the one, which is the two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven notes. In between, we will have the, the C sharp is here on the black key, the E flat is here, between E and F, nothing. And then we got F sharp. We got A flat and B flat. So if you take this, I just let me divide it because it look, looks a little over. So now learn in one key. Learn in one key first. And then transcribe into rest of the keys that you know. Let's say you don't have to do it um, just within one day you don't have to do it. Let's say, uh, for me, how I learned was, let's say I learn about a song on C major. I try to learn everything about the C major. Because most of the time, like, you know, there will be key changes between, you know, there are, there are multiple songs that will be going, going from C to D7 to G, which is a very uh, simple, lot of country songs, you will get that. But if you have that relative pitch in your head, or if you know that relationship, how it happens, learning in from one key to 12 keys is a piece of cake right so now let's get back to from here on we'll follow up to how it works for chords there's a thing called the triads triads meaning three notes so meaning what, what we are going to do is the basic chord starts from this triad the combination of triads let's take a simple C major chord right which is we start with the C E and G so a pianist will be playing just the C E G on their keyboard for guitar players they will have multiple amount of strings because probably they would not even intonate this G note because why there are open possibilities on the the guitar but the whole basis we are talking about uh, C major consists of just three notes can be jumbled here and there but this is the whole bass so if you take the major chord this is the major chord and if you take the C minor, what happens is E becomes it's a third. So it depends if it's going to be a major or minor, it's the third. Now let's go from here to the Roman numerals again. So we got the C is the one which is the 
the root. Then comes the E, which is the third. G is the fifth. Now, we are talking about minor third, meaning minor means we are losing, major means we are ascending or we are going ahead. So, minor, we are just going back one step, just one semitone down, which is the C minor equivalence to C, E flat and G. So, probably you must be knowing this concept already. So, that is about the minor. So, here it goes. This is the major here and this is the minor over here. So, I know it can be really messy because I don't have the facilities just to do on computer screen or you know, but just get your notes and I'll just leave it. Probably you can just take a screenshot for a minute or and then you can just uh, proceed with what you want to do before I head on to the next one. Good. So, let me get rid of this first. Okay. So, now that was about the simple major and minor that we learned. So, you already know what the major two is the minor. Now, we are coming into the, the next easiest thing which you will learn which is the dominant seventh go back to our roots C D E F G A B now we know the major became 1 3 5 minor is 1 3 flat 5 now the dominant seventh which is commonly we call a seventh I mean just uh, C seventh we don't we never say in our spoken you know it's it's C dominant seventh when you write but C dominant seventh, yes, some people use it, but when we just speak, I just play C7, just play F7, you know. So, if you say, if you see something like this, meaning it's the dominant seventh. Now, there's a bit of a confusion between the dominant seventh and the major seventh. Right. Now, let's go, if I take this, let's take this word called dominant. So, dominant means the seventh dominates. That's how I used to remember in all keys C, D, F, G, A, B. So, back again 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, we say the C major, C dominant seventh, which is all D up, it's a major. We extract the C, E is here, and the G is here. Now, the seventh is the B. For the dominant seventh, we make this flat, which is a B flat over here. That becomes the C dominant seventh. But now there's a thing term called like this the C major seventh. Either you write it with a triangle or C, we call it major seventh. So, what happens with the major seventh? First, we said dominant seventh, meaning this element came in here, made it flat. C major seventh. The major part, C, the major scale seventh. That's what it meant. So you take the C, E, G, and B natural is the major. So it's in the major scale, the seventh became part of this family. So, there is a root and second and fifth and there comes a seventh. Dominant seventh becomes flat because the seventh started dominating this chord. So, because of that, it give, gives you a kind of a tension creating chord. You already know this, but I know, but just go through it again. Right. So, I hope you understood. Now, let us get into the complicated chord works.
from here onwards. So I'm going to get rid of this now. Now, there are, now most of the time, you know, you ask anyone, they will know the major, minor and the dominant sense. Now, how are we going to move forward from here onwards? Uh, the very first chord I learned, which is the major I learned, learning through cassettes, then I got the minors I learned, even the sevens I learned. So around this, I did as much as I could. Inside the major chord itself, I started creating, listening, you know, to other records and all those things. I didn't know the name, but I will talk about it later. So the first time I heard a different chord voicings was the after this, which is the minor seventh flat 5. Name is huge, but let me decode this for you. Right. Now, a lot of people struggle getting this chord. The common songs that you would find is a minus and flat 5. The very first song I heard, this was back in 97 or 98, uh, a song like Now and Forever by Richard Marx. So, on j just before the, the B section comes in, there was this, I, I caught the chord by myself and uh, it was a C sharp minus 7 flat 5. I just went by the sound, but later on only I just got to know what is this relationship, how this name was given to it. So, minus 7 flat 5s are very important now, even if you are a commercial musician. Because you will find this in many songs. You take a song like I Will Survive, but, you know, the first of us, I was will right, you know, that kind of song. There is a, if the song goes on A minor, there is a minus 7 flat 5. If you are a bit of a kind of an old timer like me, okay, then probably you might have heard songs. Uh, artists like Michael Franks, minus 7 flat 5s are common in that, you know. So a lot of people think it's a jazz chord, no, at, at, I don't see it as a jazz chord because it, multiple amounts of times it has been used for, what do you call, uh, for pop music, right, yet a lot of people still don't hear it. So if you take the minus 7 flat 5, now let's come to you know this point how you can remember and how you can have good transparency you know over this chord let's take go back to roots c major c d e f g a b now let's break this minor 7th flat 5 I put the C here. So number one, C is the, the family name. It doesn't matter if it's a major, minor, diminished, whichever it says C. It's someone like, let's say, someone like Almeida. Okay, the father will be Almeida. The mother's maiden name would have been some other name. Got married to Almeida. She became an Almeida. And let's say, uh, there was a, he has a son. The son will carry the generation name, which is Almeida. If the daughter, very sorry girls, you will never be an Almeida. So if you take... C. So now we'll break this down, which is we took the root C. We already know minor is the E flat. Okay. Right? And then now we have a bit of a conclusion. You now C minor. Now let's go to the second one. C minor seventh. There you go. Now this seventh is a minor seventh, which becomes a the uh, the dominating seventh, which is going to be the B flat. Right now there we go. 
the some kind of a misfit is there which is the flat 5 the problem we have here so as i said flat or sharp we know flat is this way flat we are going flat sharp is this way so now we are going getting on to our immediate flat which is between f and g is f sharp there you go you got your chord so c minor seventh flat five basically for pianists it's very easy to visualize this because they have the notes right in front of them for guitar players they will have an illustrative memory but they have no they will just follow the shape but they will not know these notes now now i have been working on the how this flat 5 thing is happening now i'm going to change the key because i'm getting bored of c major so just get a note which way okay Now let's uh, talk about uh, key like. Mm, let's take E. Okay. So uh, just like we learned the major scale, now we will talk about some other scale, which is E major. If you write the E major scale, E, F sharp, G sharp or A flat, A, and B, C sharp, E flat. So this is the E major scale. Now and stopping at E. Just like it's equivalent to, let's say numerically it's equivalent to the same thing what we're talking about on C major. So you learn the C major, now we are getting into some other key and now let's say now we learn about c minus n flat 5 now let's work on e minus 7 flat 5 now as i said we take the e extract the e right minor which is a flat becomes g and seventh which is uh, one two three four five six seven e flat becomes a d one semitone down and then the flat five which is one two three four five becomes the b flat okay now it's lesser sharps and so that it's easy to try to understand also now i told you about in the first video understanding the triads which was we i just spoke about c e g major that's a triad c e flat g is a minor triad now how are we going to remember all these keys all 12 keys how to remember the minus seven flat five how are you going to remember this? This is how I would take. So just like we worked on the C major triad, work on the rest of the 12 keys of the triads. So if you really take, if you really break down, take this one. Let me raise it back and write it back for the fresh. It's easy. So E minus N flat 5 is E, G, B flat and D. Now inside this minus 7 flat 5, there's a triad hiding inside. Basically, how I think is, it has, this is the family ancestor name, it has borrowed another family, another triad. It's a very familiar triad. If you take, this is the one who is hiding inside. This G, 
B flat and D. So if you take the major, that becomes G B D. Just like you know, you see E G, G B D is your major, but that minor triad is hiding inside. Meaning, now how to remember all minus and flat fives in all case? If you take every major scale or every major chord has a relative minor. If you take every relative major chord got has his wife or the relative minor. Got this relative minor. So how to find that? Let's go back to C, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Relative minor is the sixth of the major scale. This is the one and this is the sixth. C major, A minor. Like that, E major, C sharp minor. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, get this also first i should have uh, explained this about before but it's okay but still you'll get the idea so the major chord has the relative minor likewise work on all keys like that meaning it's the other way around also if you take a minor if this is the wife it's the husband is over here which is the, the c major so every, every major chord has a relative minor, same way every relative minor has a relative major, right? So while I talk like this, maybe you can pause the video or two and you can just uh, go back and just jot down these notes so that you can understand as a self-study, right? So let's get back to, I'm going to erase this part, so I'm going to leave this since we're talking about the minus seven the flat fives. There you go. Now as I said, the triad is hiding inside this chord. E. This is a G minor triad. So what made E flat minus 7, E minus 7 flat 5 became equivalent to the E which is the root plus G minor triad. Learn your triads in all keys, all 12 keys. You have to learn mainly the major and minor. Major plus minor. It will open up into a big area of uh, the information that you want to know. So let me erase this as well. So now let's say, now forget about all these things. Now I said e minus n flat 5, the root is there, the father, the ancestor name, and the triad is hiding inside. So now we are going to break this down and I said E minus n flat 5 equivalent to E G minor triad meaning you, it can be turned it way it can be B flat D or G it can be G D B flat each way the three notes will be jumbled still it's a G minor triad. Now if you really look at E and G when you really think of these two they have a, a relationship with the, between these two notes which is forget about this E and G just like I how I spoke about C and A minor okay both ways it works so this time we are talking about the E minor so which is this is the wife minor G became such with the relative major as in letter the relative major and all we did was 
make the relative major a minor remember back again let's say you want to someone ask you what are the chord harmonies for e flat major and flat 5 you think in your head e is the root then you know the g major triad make it the g minor triad so g major in your head so g b d is the major triad because e minor this is a minor the relative major was the g major in instead we make this a minor so meaning think of that chord the note first note e count the relative major and then make it a minor take some notes let let let, let us let's work on some examples Let's say a chord. Let's let's say D major or something. So D minus seven flat five. We took the D. Now we are going to think. Now this this gives you a minor uh, form into this letter because of the minus and flat five. The relative major of this D is the F major, and we make it F major triad, F A C. But we are going to make it the minor triad. F A flat C. So, and if you take G minus seven flat five, we take the G, and if you take the 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 relative major of it, which is the the B flat, B flat. D and F. D became one flat, which is the minor. This is the B flat triad. B flat minor triad is D became the C sharp. So practice like this in all keys. Practice this in all keys. How to memorize the the minor seven flat five? You don't particularly need the instrument to do this you can just do it wherever you wherever you go or sometimes when you're just seated doing nothing or you know let's say you are traveling by bus or train you you have you basically you don't have to do anything but that's a that's the time that i start practicing in my digest utilizing my time to understand about keys and this will help you just map your brain and it can be very easy for you to uh, let's take another odd key, C sharp minus seven flat five. So we take the C sharp, and then this is the minor form. We are taking the C sharp. The relative is the E major, which is uh, E A flat and B. So A flat. Now this is the major form. We are making it a minor form which is the G. So these are the harmonies for C sharp minor 7 flat 5. Like that, take all 12 keys and just keep working on this uh, whatever. It, it can be interpreted the way you want to, but that's okay. But this is, I personally think that it's very easy because the very first thing we knew was the major minor triads and then the relative major minor was a very common thing that we all knew. So, Using that method, I think this will be a very easy way how to have a good transparency over keys. So that's about the the minor seventh. So now let's work on just one more harmony so that you have two more chord harmonies to work on. Uh, right. Get it on this. Let's take a very easy another one chord, which is very exotic sounding, the 
major seventh. Sorry, it's not C, just major seventh. So I told you before the major seventh was not the dominant seventh in the major scale itself. Now let's work on C major seventh. I'll get back to the C major. How much is that dog in the window, Papa? Right. So, C, D, F, G, A, B. Now, dominant seventh, I told you about this, the one, this is the two, three, four, five, oops, six and seven, eight or one. So, back again, C major seventh. We take the major characters out, which is the one, three, five, the major scale seventh. There you go. Now, after I told you, now you will see a lot of similarities in this. So, it's not a dominant seventh, it's a the major seventh, which is which gives you a very uh, a dreamy, you know, sounds very happy. It can be interpreted, or you can be even. Uh, sometimes it can be a sadness that you cannot really explain. It has a another beautiful emotion. So, back again, we are breaking this down now. How to understand major sevens in all case? C, the root, we break it down and there you go. Another triad is hidden inside. E, G, B, elephant ginger beer. Uh, e minor triad. So, I'm not supposed to do marketing here. That's anyway. So, C, E, G, B, which is the E minor triad. So, if you want to find any, now if you talk about the E, all you have to do is if you take any major scale, work on the third of the, the minor triad. Now, C, we took the one, C major seven, borrowed the, the another minor triad onto this one. Let's take another key, which is D. As I said, now this is D, meaning we are going to bring this up. So after E, G, B, E minor, C to D is one tone. E, G, B minor triad, one tone means becomes F sharp minor. F sharp, A, C sharp. See, this is an F sharp minor triad. So, this is the first of the major scale. If I write the D major scale, D, E, F sharp, G, A, D, C sharp. This is the one, two, three, and it goes on. We took the root out, and there on the major scale we counted uh, the the third degree of that and extract that uh, the the minor triad out of it. So like that, it can be, it's basically how we borrow chords. So uh, work on like this in all case. So let me get back to how we are going to get organized with it. Let me give you a reminder. I just want to keep this video as short as I can. So, uh, sorry, I can just make whatever notes that I have. Okay. And... whiteboard is horrible. So now let's go back to roots. How we are going to learn this? Number one, learn all 12 major scales. Meaning, you have to learn the C major scale, you have to learn the D major scale, E, F, G, A, B. So these are the, the white notes. Then comes the C sharp major scale, then uh, D sharp or E flat major scale, and then you will learn the next one is the F sharp major scale, or uh, then A flat major scale or G sharp major scale, and B flat major scale. All you have to do is just learn all this. And don't be in a hurry. Take one day at a time. Take one day at a time. 
probably you you must be all the uh, familiar with so much, certain major scales work on them the rest of it because whatever the core relationships ships we talk about we are going to relate all in for the all in regards to major scale so then after you do that number 2 learn triads so if and this is for all instruments it can be the saxophone it can be the guitar the piano or bass or which ever it doesn't matter you must learn you have to learn this triads meaning most important learn the major triads and minor triads start slow start slow because you will see how amazing it is once you know and once you start applying in your playing which i will teach you later some of the helpful hints and you know through a video but at this circumstances i really cannot do that and i'm sorry about it maybe in a studio or somewhere so major or minor back again learn it in all keys take the first note c major triad which is c e g take the d major triad which is d f sharp a take um, something like a flat triad which is a flat c and e flat have a good transparency over all keys like this and it's a matter of fact to making it to minor is all about your let's say you want to b flat minor triad so we take the b flat then comes c sharp and f this you can picture the way you want to picture this is the basic let's say mainly if you are if you are a bass player they will be involved with so much of triads most of the time because if you take a latin group boom bam bang titi bam boom bam bang you know which way they are playing they will be playing triads play, play or play like a genre like baila dum da pe pe dum ba pe pe you know which way they will be having triads in their playing most of the time So if you're a bass player learn these triads as well in all keys just don't play around the fretboard just because you know you play on the the, the fourth string you are playing A and just two frets jumping like a knight in the what do you call the chess game and you come down that's the the dominant or the sub dominant or which way no don't learn music like that because you are just you you have no control over what you are doing it's only that the fingers tell you what to do so because of that you you will never have a good transparency over keys so learn the major and minor triads like that so that's that point and from there onwards let me it is this part okay then comes number 3 if you want to learn about most of the chords or how it's constructed understand borrowed chords let's say borrowed understand borrowed chords meaning as i said c major if you take a c major 7th c major borrowed the e minor triad it's very easy to remember like that like that you will have a good transparency over all keys so work on these things little bit little and uh, just go through the video if i had missed something else here because i just want to keep the video as short as much as i can it's all the 50 minutes i guess so maybe on another video i will try to explain about more chord uh, voicings and how to construct them how to uh, make ambient chords what are blue notes and all those things many things that i can share with you so i will do it probably in my next video so until the best out of it and all the best guys